In season one of Game of Thrones, Tyrion tells Bronn and Shay the story of his first wife. When Tyrion was 16, he and Jaime happen upon a bloody young woman on the road, being pursued by a group of men. Jaime chases the men off, and Tyrion comes to the woman's aid. Her name is Tysha. Over the course of a single night, Tyrion and Tysha fall in love and get married. Tyrion, for probably the first time in his life, is truly happy. That is until about two weeks later when Tywin finds out about the marriage and he makes Jaime tell Tyrion the truth, that Tysha was actually a prostitute and her rescue was merely a ruse allowing Tyrion to lose his virginity. Tywin then has Tysha gang raped by his guards. This plays out identically in the books except for two caveats. First, he tells Bronn and Shay the story separately. Bronn when they are on the way back from the Eyrie, and Shay later on in King's Landing. And second, in the book, Tywin actually makes Tyrion be the last one to have sex with her, as if the experience wasn't traumatizing enough. In both the book and the show, what happens to Tysha is never explicitly stated. This experience scars Tyrion severely, and is basically the reason he has spent his life avoiding any sort of a relationship and opts to drown his sorrows in the brothels. For who could love a dwarf if not for his family name and their gold? That is until he and Shay begin their love affair, and for the first time since Tysha, Tyrion has finally found someone he believes loves him for him. Fast forward to season 4. Tyrion is put on trial for Joffrey's murder. It basically amounts to a kangaroo court where Tyrion is convicted solely on circumstantial evidence. Meryn Trant, Cersei, Pycelle, and Varys all testify against him. But the final witness is, of course, Shay. Now the show implies that Shay testifies against Tyrion because before Joffrey's death, Tyrion chastises her and tells her that he could never love a whore and that she is not worthy of his children, while Sansa is. It's obvious that Tyrion is simply doing this to make Shay leave King's Landing, thus keeping her out of harm's way. Despite this, Shay, scorned and alone, decides to take revenge on him. He does demand the trial by combat, but... My eyes! Awaiting his execution, Tyrion is rescued from his cell by Jaime. He is to be taken away from King's Landing by Varys. As he is making his escape, Tyrion sneaks into his father's quarters and finds Shay in his father's bed. He kills Shay, confronts his father on the shitter, and murders him. He is then taken across the sea by Varys. When they arrive in Pentos in Season 5, Varys tells Tyrion about the plan to instill Daenerys as the rightful heir of the Iron Throne. Varys offers Tyrion the chance to come with him to see Danny, and Tyrion agrees. Now this chain of events is basically the same as how it plays out in the books. Tyrion is put on trial, Shay betrays him, he is rescued by Jaime, he kills Shay and his father, and then escapes across the narrow sea. Except, in the books, right after Jaime frees Tyrion, Jaime, realizing this may be the final time he sees his brother, confesses that Tysha's attack on the road was real. Tysha was not a whore, and the love between her and Tyrion was real. Tywin made Jaime lie and say Tysha was a whore before having his guards, and finally Tyrion, rape her before sending her on her way. Tyrion is enraged. He swears vengeance on Jaime, Cersei, and his father, and tells Jaime that Cersei has been banging other people behind his back, including that twinky little bitch Lancel. Now many will say that the omission of Jaime's confession doesn't alter the story in any major way, since the principal plot points remain intact. However, the omission of Jaime's confession creates more than a few plot holes and completely destroys Tyrion's character arc. Let me explain. As I stated before, the implication in the show is that Shay betrays Tyrion because he called her a whore and said she was not worthy of him. This is kind of stupid. Shay in the show is not senseless. She must know that Tyrion is obviously just saying this to make her go away and thus be safe. Now she's obviously hurt by losing Tyrion, but to have her betray him, sentence him to death, it feels extremely contrived. But wait, you may ask, isn't this problem also in the book? Doesn't this fall on Martin? No! In the books, Shay does testify against Tyrion, but not for revenge or anything like that. The implication in the book is that Shay never truly loved Tyrion, but simply saw him as a chance to improve her life. When Tyrion was put on trial, that chance was squashed. We find out in a later book that Cersei actually coerced Shay into testifying against Tyrion. Shay saw a chance to improve her life, and she took it. One thing to keep in mind is that the books are all POV style, which means they are not necessarily objective. When Shay betrays Tyrion in the books, it basically dawns on both Tyrion and the reader that she never loved him. Tyrion had simply built her up in his head, not able to see that she was just using him. As Shay says in the show, which would have actually served as a great bit of foreshadowing, You should have known she was a whore. I was young and stupid. You are still young and stupid. 
Now we come to Jamie freeing Tyrion and telling him the truth about Tysha. The reason this moment is so pivotal for Tyrion's character arc is because Tyrion finally realizes that someone did love him for more than just his gold or his family name. When Shay betrays him at the trial, it isn't necessarily a net loss. Tyrion realizes he hasn't necessarily lost anything since Shay never loved him in the first place. But when Jamie tells him the truth about Tysha, Tyrion realizes that someone did love him. He had happiness. He had the love of another he so desperately sought after, and his father and his brother ripped it away from him by telling him a lie. A lie that sends Tyrion on a life path of believing he is not worthy of that love. During the trial, Tyrion sees himself condemned by the father that never wanted him, by the sister who despises him, by the city he risked everything to save at the Battle of Blackwater, by the woman he thought loved him, but it is the betrayal by Jaime, the only person in his life who has ever truly cared for him, that cuts the most. His loving brother, who was complicit in the lie that altered Tyrion's life for the worse. In this moment, Tyrion has nothing. Learning of Jaime's betrayal serves as the culmination of Tyrion's transition into a darker character. A transition that Peter Dinklage portrays brilliantly in the show. I wish I was the monster you think I am. I wish I had enough poison for the whole pack of you. I would gladly give my life to watch you all swallowing. We can already see the cracks start to form in Tyrion's psyche during the trial. After Tyrion leaves Jaime, he meets with Varys. During their escape, Tyrion finds one of Varys' secret ladders that leads to the Tower of the Hand. The same one Varys used to sneak Shay in when Tyrion served as the Hand. Realizing he has the chance to take vengeance on Tywin, Tyrion ascends to the Tower of the Hand. Whereas in the show, Tyrion just sort of, like, he sees the flight of stairs and then just pops up in the Tower of the Hand in that little compartment. Uh, but, I mean, whatever, who cares? In the show, consider what Tyrion's motivation is for going back to the Tower of the Hand. Most would say he obviously just wants revenge on Tywin for fucking him over during the trial. But Tywin has been doing this literally Tyrion's entire life. Now, Tywin was probably going to let Tyrion take the black, but after his outburst at court, with him threatening the entire city, that's when he is pretty much guaranteed his execution. Throughout the series, we get the sense that if Tywin really wanted to, he could have Tyrion killed at literally any point. But he's a Lannister. Might be the lowest of the Lannisters, but he's one of us. And there is a sense of honor in the family name that supersedes Tywin's bloodlust to see Tyrion dead. But if something were to happen that was considered inconsequential, say if Tyrion died in battle, or he was convicted for the death of a king, well, it's out of Tywin's hands. Remember, Tywin knows Tyrion didn't kill Joffrey. He is simply using the show trial as an excuse to get rid of his petulant dwarf son. Also, I don't know if this theory has been stated elsewhere, but in my view, I think Tywin was going along with the trial in order to remove suspicion of Joffrey's real killer. Tywin knows Tyrion didn't do it, and he knows neither Cersei nor Jaime would, so it must have been someone from another house. Now, if Tywin convicted Tyrion and sent him to the Night's Watch, then Tywin could conduct his own investigation about who really killed Joffrey, since the true killer would assume they got away with it. Tywin would be able to find the true killer, and if he did, Tyrion's name would be cleared. And even better, even if Tyrion's name was cleared, he may not have been able to leave the Night's Watch anyway. Tyrion is out of his life, and the family name is left untarnished. Win-win for Tywin. So yeah, the idea that Tyrion, who was on the cusp of escaping, would risk everything to sneak into the Tower of the Hand to take revenge on his father for basically doing the same shit he has done to him his whole life, again, it just seems very contrived. Also consider that if Tyrion had not found Tywin with his pants down, literally, he would have easily been overpowered and thrown back into a cell. But now let's factor in the Tysha reveal. In the book, when Tyrion realizes he has the chance to take revenge on his father, he isn't exactly thinking straight. He is in a state of rage, anger, and confusion. He knows he is risking it all, but in that moment, he doesn't care. In the book, when speaking to Varys, he says, The only thing I value less than my life just now is yours. He has no one, he has nothing to lose. And yet, there is one other reason he does this, which makes perfect sense. I'm going to get to that shortly. We find Tyrion in the Tower of the Hand. He finds postponed Shay in his father's bed. Now in the show, Shay grabs a knife and tries to shank Tyrion. This scene always felt weird to me. There's no dialogue between the two, and Shay seems super amped to kill Tyrion. There's even a split second when Tyrion looks down at her and is like, like, what the fuck, bitch? They struggle, and Tyrion is able to grab hold of her necklace. He falls off the bed and chokes her out. Tyrion is noticeably shooketh and whimpers out a soft sorry. This scene plays out very sympathetic to Tyrion, making it appear as very self-defense-ish, if you will. But in the book, oh, no. 
Tyrion finds Shay in his father's bed, and Shay pleads, saying she is in fear of his father and that Cersei made her say those things. Now, she could totally be playing with Tyrion in this moment, but then she says, my lord will be back soon, you should go, or did you come to take me away? So she might be sweet talking him, yet this line sort of makes it seem like she's pleading with him to go. Like why wouldn't she scream for the guards or something if she really wanted Tyrion to get caught? She comes off as a scared, confused girl with no fortitude or constitution. Very different from the ferocious knife-wielding Shay in the show. So then Tyrion, seeing this pleading, cowering girl in his father's bed, shows mercy on her, right? Uh, no. He grabs the chain around her neck and chokes her out. It is portrayed in a single paragraph and says nothing about Shay fighting back or her attacking him first. He even talks a little shit to her as she dies. This was straight up murder. Another step toward the dark side. Then, in both the book and the show, Tyrion confronts Tywin in the privy. In the show, Tyrion is enraged that Tywin took Shay to bed, saying that he loved her. Tywin calls her a whore twice over the course of the conversation, and Tyrion shoots him dead. But in the book, when Tyrion confronts Tywin, he doesn't even mention the fact that he killed Shay. She means nothing to him. Now, of course he hates his father and he wants revenge, but there is one thing that he wants to know even more. Tyrion asks him, what did you do with Tysha? This makes perfect sense. Now realizing Taisha did in fact love him for him, he thinks perhaps he can salvage their love if he finds out what happened to her. It is Taisha who Tywin calls a whore, which results in Tyrion killing him. So now we come to another plot hole in the show. Tyrion kills his father because he uses the word whore to describe Shay. The problem is, is that, she, well, she was a whore. I mean, not just in terms of her profession, like she fucking betrayed Tyrion at the trial like it was nothing. But in the book, Tywin uses the word to describe Taisha. But Taisha was not a whore at all. She was just an innocent girl who sincerely loved Tyrion. This is why the word triggers, no pun intended, Tyrion so much. The writers thought that substituting Shay for Taisha in this scene wasn't that big of a deal, and yet it completely overlooks the subtext and irony of the dialogue. So some of you may be saying, so what? The plot itself seems unaltered. Tyrion flees across the narrow sea and is on his way to meet Danny, just like in the book. So no harm done, right? Here's the problem. Within the first chapter of us picking up with Tyrion's story after he flees King's Landing, we see he has changed. He's always been a realist and somewhat apathetic to the world, yet he always carried an air of optimism and liveliness. But now Tyrion is more vindictive, drowning his sorrows in booze, self-loathing, fantasizing about mounting Cersei and Jaime's heads, and even briefly muses about killing Varys. Illyrio brings him a young woman to have, but Tyrion chastises her, insults her, and even threatens to strangle her as he did to his last whore. Tyrion is bitter, vengeful, and incredibly self-loathing, a drastic change from the witty Tyrion we know and love. And yet in the show, when he lands in Pentos, he... Oh, I mean, he just kind of seems like the same old Tyrion. We don't get the vengeance, the hate, the bitterness, just the same old, same old. In the books, Tyrion follows along with Illyrio and Varys' request to find Danny for sort of the same reason as in the show. He simply doesn't have anything else to do. Cersei has put a bounty on his head, so he needs to be incredibly careful where he goes. But in the books, he also has the drive of finding Tysha, however hopeless that may be. At one point in the books, Tyrion goes to a brothel in search for Tysha. He picks out a Westerosi-looking woman and beds her. The girl is completely unwilling and uncomfortable, and Tyrion seems to just be hounding her like a dog, asking her if she knows Tysha as he takes her. After he finishes, he vomits, disgusted with the man he has become. He urges the young girl to kill him, to put him out of his misery, and then he fucks her again. The Tyrion we know and love is gone. In the show, the same scene is presented except, well, he just sort of sweet-talks one of the women and... Then as she is taking him to bed, he stops. He says he can't for, like, some reason. The show doesn't really explore this, and we are meant to assume maybe, like, honestly, I don't even know why he refuses. It doesn't really make any sense. In the book, it is clear that he is disgusted with what he has become, consumed by rage, guilt, vengeance, shame, and self-loathing, perhaps even feeling immense guilt over the traumatic rape of Taisha that his father made him perform. And yet all those feelings, all that character development, in the show, nothing. But hey. Jorah still kidnaps him at the end of the scene in both the book and the show, so who cares about Tyrion's inner character development, right? This is why Tyrion has basically been regulated to a static character in the last few seasons of the show. In the books, Tyrion has yet to meet Danny face to face, and during his journey to find her, he starts to slowly regain his sense of self-worth and dispel the monster within. Yet in the show, there doesn't seem to be anything that is driving Tyrion to continue on except for the fan hype of him and Danny finally meeting. Fans were so amped about two fan-favorite characters meeting 
they didn't notice or didn't care that Tyrion's character has come to a complete standstill. Now the reason for the showrunners omitting the Taisha reveal is somewhat vague. Perhaps they did so just to streamline the story. But in my opinion, I feel one of the reasons they did this was because they didn't want to kill the bromance between Tyrion and Jaime. Now the relationship between Jaime and Tyrion is very touching and sentimental and a breath of fresh air in a saga filled with fucked up family relations. But while their relationship is touching, it isn't all that interesting or packed with conflict. Contrast their relationship with Tyrion and Cersei. They loathe and detest each other, yet do not underestimate each other's intellect and capabilities, and even indulge in moments of sympathy. Showing that despite everything, they are family and that means something. Tyrion and Tywin is another brilliantly complex relationship. Contempt and animosity, yet respect. Jaime and Tyrion love each other, and that's pretty much it. But in the books, when Jaime tells Tyrion the truth about Tysha, their relationship is severed. This sets up a juicy confrontation between the two brothers if they ever cross paths in the novels again, which I'm pretty sure they will. In the show, without the Tysha confession, they are still on good terms. I thought they were going to rectify this by having Jaime enrage at Tyrion for killing Tywin, and perhaps feeling guilty that he had a hand in inadvertently killing his own father. In the books, Jaime even muses that had he known Tyrion was going to kill Tywin, he would have killed Tyrion to stop him. But then they meet in season 7, and they seem fine. It's whatever, cool. So, as for another plot hole, do you remember this scene? You idiot. You fucking idiot. So, Tyrion, who still loves his brother, the only person he actually cares about in the world, watches him charge into certain death and doesn't do anything. He just stands there. No yelling, no waving his arms, nothing. Stop! Don't! Now, if they had kept the Taisha reveal, this could have been an excellent character moment. Tyrion watches Jaime charge into certain death, quenching his thirst for revenge. Yet in the moment, watching his brother about to be turned to ash, Tyrion snaps out of his bitter and hateful self, and it is a sign that he is beginning to regain his humanity. What concerns me most about this omission is that it seems more and more likely that they are setting up Tyrion to betray Danny and Jon in the final season of the show. Tyrion is starting to question Danny's temperament as a queen. He feels guilt about the deaths of Marcella and Tommen, and now that Cersei is pregnant, he doesn't want to have another member of his family put in harm's way. After all, you know how much I love my family. This betrayal seems pretty obvious in retrospect. Since the moment Tyrion discovers Cersei is pregnant, it just cuts back to the dragon pit with Cersei being all cooperative and shit. Also because of that weird ominous look Tyrion makes on the ship when Jon is giving Danny some familial dick. Now had they kept the darker Tyrion in the show, this could have probably actually worked. My theory is that, in the books, once Tyrion finally meets Danny, he is so blinded with rage and thirst for vengeance, he isn't able to properly vet her to determine if she would make a virtuous ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. As they make their way across the sea, he slowly comes to realize the darker aspects of Danny's personality that we as viewers and readers have seen throughout the series. So once Danny, Tyrion, and co reach the Seven Kingdoms, Tyrion begins to realize what he has unleashed upon his former home. And despite the fact that he swore vengeance on his family and the kingdom that cast him aside, upon seeing his brother almost killed by Danny, he finally wakes up and realized his quest for vengeance has resulted in the possibility that his entire family will be scorched by dragons. This is what leads him to betray her in the end. But because we did not get this darker Tyrion in seasons 5 and 6, I just don't buy that Tyrion was not able to see that Danny was not as magnanimous as others may are out to be. So yeah, it could have worked, but I have a feeling that if or when Tyrion betrays her in the final season, fans are going to cry bullshit because the writers didn't lay sufficient enough groundwork for it to seem non-contrived, and more importantly, that they ruined one of their favorite characters. Because they like Tyrion, they want him to be the good guy. This is why fans cried BS after Jaime raped Cersei next to Joffrey's body in season 4 claiming that it ruined his character. This is why, as the series went on, we got more archetypal good characters and evil characters as opposed to the more complex and morally questionable ones of the earlier seasons. This is ultimately why I think they removed the Taisha Confession and left out the darker Tyrion, because they didn't want to have their fan favorite character do morally questionable things, despite the fact that this means Tyrion's character arc in seasons 5 and 6 is pretty much non-existent. Sorry Tyrion, you deserve better. You suck!